I was just settling in for a relaxing cup of oat juice and tomfoolery compliments of the internet when a wild email appeared. Okay, let's see what this says. Spicy content. Can you make a date in your life, Taiwan ETA video? Now, I usually don't make these kind of videos outside of Fulbright season, but they've sent a distress signal. Wait, you don't actually have on a super suit under that. Well, hello there. I am Brittany Edwards and this channel is a box of chocolate and this video was specially requested. I know it's supposed to be a day in the life of a Fulbright ETA, but this video is not that. This video is a day in my life as a Fulbright ETA because you need to be mentally prepared to experience Taiwan, but I say that in the bestest of ways. So a typical day, I probably wake up around 6.30 a.m., snooze the alarm, and then wake up again at 6.39. Nah, I'm just kidding. I usually wake up on the first alarm. So anyways, after I actually wake up at 6.30, I spend about 15 minutes on the toilet, scrolling on the internet, reading my emails, losing all feeling in my legs. Nothing really extravagant happens during this time. Once I decide that that's enough masochism for the day, I get up, brush my teeth, and put on some clothes to head out into the real world. About seven o'clock, I'm heading out the door and pulling my bike that I got for free to borrow for my school. If you ask, you will potentially receive, so just ask. This IE has these breakfast wraps. Delicious, like, mm. Okay, I either get something to eat from her or there was this breakfast joint that was really close to where I lived and sometimes I would stop there but my favorite spot to go to was this place. It got to a point where I went there so often that they were like the usual, I was like yeah the usual. What I would usually get in the mornings was probably some type of dumping and that is like a crepe with a fried egg, like a scallion crepe, so savory crepe with egg and then whatever other toppings that they want to put in there. Side note really quickly, towards the end of my life in Taiwan, I found this other really good breakfast spot by me and they did like this puff pastry with cheese and bacon dumping. Oh my gosh, it was so good. So that was probably my original order and then I ended up switching my order to a dropping. I love dropping. Dropping. Jiaji roll. And a um... Dojang Hong Cha, and I absolutely love the Dojang Hong Cha that they sell. Like, and Dojang Hong Cha is very difficult to get because nobody makes it all consistently. Like, it's very chaotic and reckless, just like all of Taiwan, which I really love and admire. Like, they had yellow watermelons there, and their guavas were white. I saw round pineapples, like, it was. <laughs> Okay, so anyways, after I would get breakfast, generally it's about 7 minutes, so um, that's why I would leave my house at 7, even though I didn't have to be at school until 7.30. So I usually get to school around 7.23 was when I would like step in. So it's really weird because the first 30 minutes of the day, the kids are just cleaning the school, which is brilliant, but also heartwarming because it's brilliant. They're saving janitorial costs while also embedding and instilling very important like qualities and morals, ethics, training. Genius. Brilliant. If I ever open a school, I would definitely have them clean it. It builds character. Yeah, that's what it does. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! While they're cleaning from 7.30 to 8, I would usually just sit down in my classroom and eat my breakfast. There are also no ACs. It's a very natural environment. And then from 8 to like 8.20, they have this first period type of thing. And so for the most part, I didn't do anything during that period. That was just kind of like extra time for me. I started to have a reading, and a story time. So that was for all grades, from first to sixth grade. And I would 
find a book to read to them and then like maybe create some activities for them to do to make sure that they kind of like understood the story. Right, there's also the fact that on Mondays, I think it was only on Mondays, maybe it was only on Tuesdays, there was a school-wide morning meeting that would happen from the eight to eight twenty time period of the day. And so everybody, gathers out on the field and they do their you know special announcements and their whatever whatever that they need to do and then my first class started at 8 30 between at first i was kind of mad that my alarm went off but it actually lined up really perfectly like i was literally just saying my first class started at 8 30 and then the little bell rang i don't know where my old schedule photo is i like I always see it when I don't need it and now that I need it I've checked everywhere and I can't find it but I did find this other schedule so you can see the layout of my classes. Each class is probably about 50 minutes long and between every single class the students have a 10 minute period where they can just be chaotic, run around, scream. In addition to the 10 minutes between every class they also have real life recess for 20 minutes. There's a lot of built-in time for the students to be just, you know, their youthful selves and kind of release all of their energy because I feel like for the most part, the classrooms are a high stress environment. So I really like that they build in and incorporate all of those opportunities to de-stress for them because they really need it. But we'll have that conversation another time. <laughs> One of my favorite things became sitting on the little stoop at recess and listening to the bell ring that signals, hey, y'all need to get back to class. And just watching them disperse, they would just run. And it was just this juxtaposition of so much life and loudness and chaos and then emptiness and stillness, but it's not really stillness. Like the, the playground still has life because the swings are still swinging, the balls are still rolling. And it was just, it felt so poetic and I just really loved those moments. So those are, those are my little, that's one of my little bloops that I really enjoy. Mondays I had very packed schedule. I taught fifth and sixth grade English and I had three sections per class. And then I also taught PE. So they were trying to do this thing that's called CLEAL. CLEAL is Content Language Integrated Learning. So that is teaching an alternate subject in a target language. So teaching PE in English or teaching science in Spanish or something like that. My principal loved the fact that I was black. She really wanted to create more cultural awareness and inclusion in the space of her school and she wanted to share my culture with her and so i also you know mentioned how i'm part jamaican my parents are jamaican and so my blood is jamaican right and they fully obsessed over that part and they wanted me to teach the students a jamaican dance i don't know if you know anything about jamaican dance styles or music but it's not very minor friendly so i'm over here like oh my gosh what song could I even use? How could I, what dance moves? I was like, <clears throat> you know what? I'm just gonna have to give you guys some American dance moves with some Jamaican music to kind of, you know, mix them all together. <laughs> and it was so funny because the PE teacher said, wow, I think if you can mix American dance style with Jamaican music, it would be very fresh. I was like, yeah, it would be pretty fresh, huh? <laughs> so um, that's what my PE classes became. I was so tickled watching these kids whip and nay nay. Okay, also really quickly, sorry, I'm getting really distracted. They played dodgeball with only one ball and I was so confused. I was like, what? This is so boring. Like you need to have a whole bunch of chaos but it was very orderly, one ball. I think maybe the hand-eye coordination is just, they don't wanna. Oh, that reminds me, I forgot. I was gonna tell you about this other thing. So, okay, one of the things that I also super loved, sports day. So sports day is just kind of this thing that all of Taiwan does. And at my school, we had a field day and it's just, this day is full of a lot of competition. So I made this really cute little video that was kind of like a um, 
an advertisement for their sports day video. I'm gonna see if I can incorporate it with blurring faces, question mark. So I hope it still hits the same though. I don't wanna get sued for the music and do, I don't wanna get sued for child exploitation or something like that. This one day I arrived to school and apparently it was National Jump Rope Day and the whole school had jump ropes. They were all jump ropes. I did not get the memo. I was wearing this white dress, but it was really fun and cute. Like I got in with all of the English teachers and the principal. We were all jump roping together. I got in with the PE teacher that I worked with and it was just so fun, you know, to see just that random youthful experience. I just really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my Taiwan life if you cannot tell. As you can see my Tuesdays were pretty open but another thing that I did during that time was create and schedule a time to lesson plan with my co-teacher and we usually did that right before lunch. Even though my schedule doesn't look fully full here you have to remember that every morning they were adding in the English story time and then I ended up having this class for teachers to learn English and it became like slightly a Zumba and we did dances together. It was very, very interesting. But I also did PowerPoints to kind of introduce them to American culture. It was supposed to be kind of an American culture class, an English speaking space for administrators at the school that did speak English. There was only like five of them and three of them were English teachers. So <laughs> it was fun, it was a good time. Oh, my favorite part about working in a Taiwan school was that we had nap time. And it's like, not just for the students, the administrators, all of us, we all had nap time after lunch. 30 minutes to actually eat plus 20 minutes for nap time, I think. I think it was 20 minutes. But if you eat quickly, then you'd have a longer nap time. And the whole school, it's just, it's great. It's wonderful. Everything is very communally based. So all of the students, all the older students bring in the lunch to the classrooms for the younger students. Like there's no cafeteria, at least not in my school. Some schools I know that they did have a cafeteria but um, there's no cafeteria, so every they're all eating in their classroom and the teachers eat in the uh, collective office space that we have downstairs. You have your little cubicle desk type thing. It's not a real cubicle, it's kind of like a, a half a cubicle thing, not high walls. So anyways, um, we would all just grab our lunch, eat it, Everybody brushes their teeth and flosses after eating and then we all just lay down for a nap. It's just, we need to bring that here. What they call that siesta in Spain? We need that in America. The students also have a period of cleaning up at the end of the day and that is another 20 minutes that's right before the last class. So I feel like our days usually ended at four? Question mark? And then at the end of the day, I would ride my bike back home, stop and pick up some food. Oh my gosh. So I would indulge in these little wheel cakes that were right by where I lived. And they were so delicious, but also so untrustworthy because you don't know when they're going to be open, when if they're going to have the flavor that you want. And... I really liked this bubble tea flavor, but the most delicious one was this cheese. Oh my gosh, it was like savory and sweet and crunchy and mm. yes, big fan, big mood. And then the other most delicious thing was this chicken stall called Chicken Juiciness. And these people had a line, like it's just this little, I don't even know how to describe it. You know like those people that have a gelato cart at the beach or something? It was that small of a stall. Like it's not a full restaurant or anything. It's just this street vendor. And they had a beautiful operation. Their chicken was the best fried chicken that I ever had in my entire life. And that was one of our um how do i say it like one of our 
tourist sites. Anytime that somebody came to visit us, we would say, okay, there's two things you have to do. One, you have to come with us to chicken juiciness. And then the other thing is you have to go with us to trash night. I don't know why, but taking trash was so fun and just exciting. It's, that was kind of our, uh, those were the exciting things that we did with guests when they came to visit us. But chicken juiciness is so good. And it's not even just their chicken. They had these like fried sweet potato wedges. If you are very titillated by the concept of Taiwan and my journey there, <coughs> you know, a little book on it or whatever that you could. Caught it. That you could check out on Amazon. I'm working to get connected with some independent bookstores and private owners. So, you know, if you're not about supporting the giant, hook me up with your local bookstore friend and ask for this to be featured. You're just gonna have to go to Taiwan. I just, I can't, it has to be done. Great, I'm glad we had this conversation. See you in Taiwan sometime soon. Mm -hmm.